Mm-hmm. And then for the deadlift, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. All right. But they did, when they were doing deadlifts, they were doing trap bar deadlifts rather than regular deadlifts. But but I know that um, Otis was very, very strong in the deadlift. I remember that. Well, uh, Ember Moon and Bianca both deadlifted 415 pounds. That's a lot. Yeah. And for the men, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. All right. Boogs and Fabian Eichner both did 755. It's also a trap deadlift, but it's, I mean, it's a lot, though. It's a lot. Trap deadlift. It's not like a, a regular deadlift. Like uh, like an 800-pound regular deadlift is extraordinary. But with the trap deadlift, because you're, um, I mean, basically because of the trap bar being so much higher, you're pulling it a lot less. You don't basically have to stand up. So, um, I mean, the high numbers are good. I mean, they're, they're really, really good. They're a lot, but it's not like, like if you're looking at, like, like Steve Williams, who did like incredible deadlift. I mean, he did like real deadlift. I don't want to say real because it's it is a deadlift on the trap bar. It's still real. But it's Demetrius not... Bronson seven sixty and Otis seven seventy five. Yeah, that's a lot. It sure is. Weighted chin ups, three reps. Bianca did three reps with two hundred and six pounds around her waist. That's freaking incredible. Yes, that's, that's very for a woman. That is very impressive. Well, let's talk about Otis. Mm. Otis did three reps with an additional 380 pounds around his waist. Jesus Christ. That's like, and he's already 330 <laughs> that's pounds. A, that's a big, and that's... Baba Tunde did 398 pounds around his waist for three reps. I wonder what kind of form these guys were doing. That's a lot. I mean, I've seen. That's a lot. I've never seen guys do that. But then again, no one no one does that specific thing. I mean, I, I, you know, have seen guys, you know, do like in the old days. I, I mean, I never see it now. But in the old days, I definitely would see people w- that would work out with 50-pound additional weights and do, you know, rep after rep, you know, 10 reps, 12 reps. But I never saw anyone put 200 on. And I, you know, in the old days in the ironworks and everything where – I mean, we had some of the strongest men in the world. You know, I mean, Olympic weightlifters and Brian Oldfields and, you know, John Powell's. I mean, these were, these were Olympic, um, you know, you know, strong, strongest weight men in the world and some of the strongest power lifters in the world that were around. And, man, I never saw anyone. I never saw anyone try it with that type of weight. God, and then the uh, standing broad jump. Bianca was eight feet, seven inches. Montez, 11 feet, 2 inches. That's a hell of a standing broad jump. You don't say. Who, who was it? There was someone. I was, I'm was. i trying to remember who it was that I saw the. Oh, it was, oh, it was Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker, yeah. I think Braun Breaker was around 10 feet when he did that. You know, it's but funny because they did that uh, that NXT combine a little while ago. Remember they did that combine to get to slot the people into the tournament? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like they wanted like uh, Ren Sinclair in, who's not one of these college athletes or anything, NIL athletes. And they're like, you know, she did really well in the such and such. And you're like, okay, I mean, whatever. But if you look through this list right here, I mean, most of the top people that placed in the top are like who you would expect. You know, Montez, Bianca... Uh, Baba Tunde and Otis, but every now and then, you know, uh, Mandy Rose came in third. Well, Mandy, Mandy, Mandy Rose is a good squat. Yep, standing broad jump. She came in third place. Peyton Royce and Liv Morgan tied for third in the ten yard reverse ground start sprint. Backward sprint. Yeah, came in third place know. among everybody. That's, that's I guess. And, I tried. Uh, I tr- I tried that one. That's that's a, that's a hard one because you're not, you know, unless it's something you practice. You you know, you you could fall down doing a back a backward sprint. Billy Kay actually came in third in the farmers carry among the women. Well, the farmers carry is about endurance because it just hurts. Yeah, you know, it's just like how long can you go before your shoulders just give out? It's more, that's more of an endurance than the. She was actually only six seconds away uh, from uh, Bianca in that yeah. one. So, uh, anyway, where the hell were we? Oh, this Otis match. Yeah. So, Chad browbeats Otis, and he says, this is going to hurt me. You're going to have to learn some discipline. He takes off his belt, and he's about to whip him when uh, Maxine jumps in front. 
And he starts screaming at her and tells her to get the hell out of here and don't come back. So it sounds like she might be gone for good. And he's about to whip Otis and Sammy's music hits. And Sammy comes down to the ring and they have this big deal where Sammy's trying to talk Otis into doing the right thing. And he ends up getting a hold of the belt. The fans are chanting, whoop that trick. And Gable tells uh, Otis to stand between them. So Sammy says, Otis, what are you going to do? Listen to this guy. You need to listen to these people. And Chad says, Otis, you don't need to listen to them. Sammy says, listen to your heart. And so Chad jumps Sammy, starts beating him down. Sammy fights back and uh, actually double legs the Olympian. Chad mm. got taken down. Otis pulls him off. This gives Chad the opportunity to German Sammy. The fans are chanting, let's go, Otis. But Chad demands, Otis, get your ass to the back. And Otis very sadly follows. So it's a great segment. And they're they're taking their time building up to this Otis thing. Yeah. And it's going to be big. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those, those type of segments always, you know, it'll work. The question's always the follow-up, though. So many times you get it to its, where it's really big, you do the turn, and then you drop the ball with the turn because you haven't figured out what you're going to do with the guy. You just, you've only figured out how to get to the turn. And the key is not the turn. The key is the follow-up of the turn. And I don't know how, again, how high will they let him go? And I don't know the answer to that. Because if he stays at the level he's at, it's like, okay, he turned. You know, he was a baby face before. He was actually a baby face anyway before Chad turned. Yeah. Then we had a segment where Zoe and Shane are backstage saying they got to invite Bianca and Jade to Raw. Sonya shows up, says, you guys are never going to win without me. They kind of blow her off. And then uh, there's Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. Mm-hmm. Remember them? Yeah. Yeah, they're on TV. They challenged them to a match. Yeah. And then the main event was Liv and Becky for the women's title in a cage match. And it was a fine cage match. It was nothing nothing particularly special. And after the break, Becky takes Liv off the middle rope, slams her, got a double down, and suddenly outruns Dominic. And he opens up the cage door, and he's begging for Becky to escape the cage. So J.D. and Balor run down. They're like, what the hell are you doing? And Dom says... You know, Rhea said to make it right. You know, Becky gets out and Liv is not the champion anymore. So they're like, all right, you know, do whatever. But since JD is out there, Braun's music hits and he runs down to kill JD. So JD goes running. Braun chases him around the cage. Braun smashes into uh, Dominic. Dominic. And of course, Dominic just happens to fly into the cage door, which slams on Becky's head. It allows Liv to accidentally get the win for the second night in a row as a result of Dom. And so at this point, we actually had a full-on WCW fuck-up. They ran out of time before the big moment, which was Liv and Dom are in the aisle. Liv looks at Dom. She grabs him. She gives him a huge kiss. He's acting like he wants nothing to do with it. He glares at her. She smiles at him and runs off. But they actually went off the air before they did the kiss. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see it, it's on the front page. You know, they got it up all over the Internet. They uploaded the entire thing. But uh, that's quite the spot to miss right there after all that time. Mm -hmm. So maybe the storyline will be that Rhea hasn't seen it because it didn't air on television. That would be a tough one. Doubtful, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.